Willie D. Live. One of our biggest problems as a people is our health. And that is what's really affecting us, even the, even the younger children. I mean, I've never seen this many cases of autism us, with us growing up. Why is that? It's interesting. I heard that it was, I heard that that was something that was self-induced. You know, like, like I heard that you know, people did something. And and and, and, I and they that, think we crazy, a, but them guy, people are real people. But there's there's a guy who worked for the CDC. They he dead now. I was about to say they killed him. They probably killed him. But the guy was going to expose where well, he exposed him. Mm-hmm. And uh, next thing you know, dude ended up dead. But he was saying that yeah, uh, they he had had information that the people that worked there was like yeah, they acknowledged that there was the black kids were getting uh, autism disproportionately. And they knew what was happening. They were saying that the immunizations were doing, were causing. They, they, they were the catalyst for the um, autism. And they knew all yeah. that time, and they continued to inject them babies. Like Tuskegee. Like Tuskegee. That's what scares people. That's what really. That's the thing that scares that black makes people. people. Not want to go. That's the thing that scares black people about going to the doctor is because of that history of using black people as guinea pigs. I agree. I agree, and that's why we have to be wise in who we go to mm. and who we choose to yeah, go. Yeah, because to. not going is not an option. Right, not going right. is putting us in a situation where some of us are, you know, we're gone too soon. You know, like even when you're looking at going back to the point of Bobby Brown, you know, when I seen him on stage and then when I was in the audience, because I like watching shows from the audience. I'm not the side watching show guy. So I'm watching the show and I'm going, people love Bobby Brown. For real. I mean, For real, like, real. we <laughs> yeah. love Bobby Brown. We don't care if you yeah. do one step. We don't yeah. care if yeah. you just said, because Bobby, you put it all out on the line, and yeah. we appreciate you. And we don't agree with all your decisions you made, yeah. but you you did what you wanted to do, and you st- you took responsibility. You standing up for it. And we've seen all of these tragedies happen in your life, and you still up there. You still performing. Bobby had a stroke. Mm-hmm. Bobby had different things going on with him. And he's on the other side of trying to get himself together. So when I'm looking at him and I'm looking at the audience and the love we got, I say, yo, you know what, Bobby? You ain't got to dance too much, bro. Because we don't want you to hurt yourself, bro. Right. But we appreciate just seeing you. You know what I That's mean? That's right. That's and right. That man, is, shots uh, out to the king, man. Yeah, shots king out to stage, Bobby man. Brown. That's king my guy. the stage, man. And nobody yeah, ever right. going to take that for right, from man. him. I mean... And a, and, 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 a, and a shout out to all the guys at New Edition, man. New Edition, all like for us, for our generation, you know, that's that's family. Yeah, you know, that's family. And for future, you know, generation that came after us, also, that's family. Like New Edition, all of them guys. It's like our brothers, you know, man. The, you know, what that, I'm saying? that's family. New Edition is family, man. And then Guy and you know yeah. and Teddy, Teddy. Yeah. I, when I made the show, I went to his house. Yes. So Teddy is like my little brother. Yeah, shouts out to Teddy. You know what I'm saying? Teddy is Aaron, a good dude. Damon, yeah, did man. so much, so much work, man. Keep Put sweat, in. brilliant oh, artist, man. tank. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Those guys to yeah. me, just seeing them out there working and watching the audience feel good, hearing these songs and getting these memories and just being there with somebody that you really appreciate. That's what this is all about. I think we, I think we get lost in ego. And I always say ego stands for easing God out to me because you get so caught up in your own personal emotions, which is nothing but energy in motion. And you get so caught up in it that who they think, what, do you know who I am? Do you, uh," you know what I'm saying? And sometimes you just, you're so caught up in that that you're missing, you're missing the moment. Like, the moment is here. Like, bro, we here. We celebrating black excellence. Look at this. These dudes came from the same place we came from. And look at how successful they are. You got the black collective promoters. This is a whole black experience, y'all experience. And you don't even know it. Like, black promoters got together as a team 
And then one of them is from from H, from, is Gary. And he's a good man. Like, that whole team got together, put on this show, put the tour out, and everybody is getting money. We could do it. We just got to stop being so fearful, man, and stop being so hateful and jealous, you know what I'm saying, and get caught up in, like, the past. What well, well, doesn't that jealousy and hatred come from fear? Yes, it does. It yeah. breeds the, the the jealousy, or rather the fear, breeds the jealousy and hate. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it's just this little thing. Like, Rick got a Grammy. Slick Rick got a Grammy, a Lifetime Grammy or something like that. Cass was asking me, yo, do you think you should get a Grammy? I said, man, I'm not, it, that thing does not even mean nothing to me. If they did it, I appreciate it. Thank you for the acknowledgement. I said, but I just want to go support my brother over here. You know what I'm saying? I went in there in the audience. I'm sitting there watching. I come about this. He said, oh, man, you came. Oh, wow. His mom is there. His wife is there. The family is there. It's just that little moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, these things really don't have no value. They really don't. The only value they have is the energy that we put in into it. And to your point, if we if you're lying on your deathbed, you know, you're not going to say, hey, man, let me see my Grammy. Bring my Grammy up here. You're going to say, let me see my guy. Right. Where's my sister? Where's my brother? Where's my mother? Where's my best friend? I want to talk to them. Right. That's who you're going to ask for. That's, That's what means important. the most. That's what means the most. When it's time for you to go and you ain't got no more, <laughs> how do you want to be remembered? When it's time for me to go, you ain't got no more. And I don't have no more. I would want to be remembered as someone who contributed to this experience in the best way to make things better for the next group when they come to experience it, to stop this inner hatred towards each other, to stop being afraid to express yourself and take a chance and be who you really are. Stop hiding. Stop stop being in the corner and believe that you can't contribute. And I mean that mostly to blacks and Latinos because I think sometimes we feel afraid to play this game called life. But I think on a whole, you know, I feel we can, I feel like I want to make sure that everybody on this planet is affected by the contribution that I'm able to make, whether it's from health, whether it's from hip hop, and whether it's just from conversations like this that we're having and maybe they could take something out that they can apply. I want to be a person that they know, call me the hardware store because I wanted you to get some tools so that you could survive because life is not easy. This is a tough ride and our mothers and fathers didn't tell us it was going to be like this. You know what I mean? But if you're able to just keep yourself together you know, and you practice healthy practices and not always have to lean towards the things you got used to or you was introduced to, hopefully it'll be a better ride for you than it was for me. And then you'll pass it on to the next person and that'll make it a better ride for them. That's what I feel we're here to do, you know? Right. I got one more question for you. Yes, sir. Something's been nagging me for years. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I see it. Your name is Douglas Davis. That's that's your government name. No. What's your, what's your government name? My name is Dougie Fresh now. Well, when, you're, I was, you're, when, I, you're, when I was younger, right. It was Douglas Davis, right? Right, in the beginning. Did, yeah. did, and most most people I know that have a first and middle name that's a uh, first and last name <laughs> that starts with D, Family call him Didi. Did, well, did they call you Didi growing no, up? No, you never no, had Didi no, growing up. Come no, on, man. Be honest, dog. Be honest. <laughs> Go on, be honest, man. Did they call you Didi growing up? Nah, 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 <laughs> nah. And you know what's so hey, look? And you know what's so crazy? The only reason why, well, beyond just that, but you know, Davis was was um, you know, like I never knew who my father was 
throughout my life. I just found out who he was probably around six months before he passed. So I never knew who my father was. So the name Davis is not my father. Mm. You see? Okay. So that's why. So that was easy for you to get rid of that. Well, I had to because I felt like I didn't even know him. Right. Like I wasn't raised from him. I didn't even know who he was. This was a relationship. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm like number four in the list of five with my mother. So I never knew who my father was. So when I didn't know who my father was, uh, I felt like to have that name and I don't even know who the man is didn't logically make sense. And then the interesting twist in this is that back to hip hop for a second, in school, I used to battle people in the lunchroom. So I battled three people in the lunchroom at the same time. And we would cut school, we would cut class because we was battling. And everybody was the biggest battle in the school in New York. And, and it was crazy. So I beat all three of them. So there was a kid, Latino kid came up to me. He said, yo, Dougie. He said, yo, man, that battle was crazy in the school, man. He said, yo, I'm going to tell you, man, yo, I need to put your name on the wall. He wrote graffiti. He said, I want to put your name on the wall. I said, nah, man, that's all right. He said, man, everybody in the school is going crazy, man, of what you did. He said, man, just let me put your name on the wall. I said, nah, man, I'm cool. I don't need to do all of that. He said, Dougie, I'm telling you, just for me, let me just write. He said, what you want me to write? Just to say anything that come to your mouth. I said, I said, just write. Just write Dougie's Fresh. Like Dougie's Fresh. Like Dougie's Nice. You know what I'm saying? He wrote on the wall, Doug E. He wrote Dougie Fresh. So I came to school, (laughs) Willie, and every day they'd be like, yo, what's up, Fresh? Yo, what's good, Fresh? Yo, what's good? And I'm like 14. And he said, yo, what's good, Fresh? Yo, what's good? Yo, Fresh. And after that, that's how I got the name. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and so I said it must have been meant for me to have it and then afterwards when I got to at around 20 something I changed it legally because I just did not feel right carrying another man's name and I have no relationship to him that's crazy to me you know what I'm saying so, so are your kids last name fresh everybody's fresh your kids your, your Everybody. wife everybody's fresh everybody's that's dope fresh. though that's dope everybody's <laughs> fresh and you know what they that's are dope. they are the new generation yeah. and because I couldn't carry my father's last name cuz I never knew him yeah. and then when my mother passed my mother I kept I say could you tell me I said cuz I would ask her my mother had Alzheimer's when she passed and you know I said Oh, could you tell me who my father? Why you want to know that? What you need to know that for? So I was like, this is crazy. This is crazy. I never knew this. Through my whole life. And then afterwards, six months after, that's where I found out. But I was already fresh. 